Okay, I'm here with Mitch today from Jans. Mitch, what have you got to show us today? Uh, today we're talking about the Clearcom DX210. Uh, so here at Jans, we actually sell, obviously, Clearcom. Uh, we're, the, we're the national distributor. Now, Clearcom have three tiers of communication systems, so or wireless communication systems at least. So on top we have the FreeSpeak, which is very flexible. We have next the Tempest system, and then now we have the DX210. Now well, hang on Mitch, it says HME on the side. It does say HME on can the side. Can you explain this for me? I certainly can. HME bought Clearcom in April 1st last year, and again, you know, we thought it was a big uh, April Fool's joke, um, you know, obviously being April 1st, but when we did actually realise that it was HME that bought out Clearcom, Clearcom, we kind of thought that was a really good idea because it's always a wireless communication system or uh, a supplier of a wireless communication system being HME. Yep. And you've got Clearcom who have been around for a long time doing communication system and now that brings in the best of both worlds. Yeah, which Clearcom's become, pretty big on, on DSP and that sort of thing as exactly, well. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, cool. So tell us about the DX210. What, what's it, what's it, what frequencies it run on? What, okay. what can it do? The DX210 is 2.4 gigs. It's basically got all your party lines and four-wire ports on the back of it. Now, the DX210 accepts up to 15 wireless belt packs per base station. The way that this works is there's four full duplex lines when it's in one channel mode, which means that you can talk and listen, or up to four people can talk to listen at one time. Mm -hmm. Now, if you change it to two-channel mode, because it is actually a, two, a true two-channel party line system, you basically take up a time slot, which means that you only have three full duplex talks or uh, talk and listen feed for any of the belt packs. Now, that can be any of the 15 belt packs, but it is any of those belt packs that you can have those three feeds on. So the other ones can be just listen only because a lot of the times you do only need some listen only belt packs. Um, but there's certain people you just don't want talking back exactly. to you as well. Exactly. And you can lock those down so you can only have listen only okay, feeds that's going cool. to them. Excellent. Okay, so as far as our inputs and outputs, we've also got an auxiliary in and out from the looks of it. Yes, correct. Which in fact we, we're using right now. Exactly. No, the... the DX210 is actually a really great tool for people who are doing small productions and need wireless comms, as well as their existing wired comms. Um, so basically, there's two ports on the back of it, which is an auxiliary input and an auxiliary output. Now, the auxiliary input can be used for many purposes, but for example, a program feed. So if you've got some program that's coming in from the show or whatever you're doing, you can bring that in so all the belt packs can listen to that. Now, you also might need to talk out to back of stage uh, positions or anything along those lines, which you can use the auxiliary out for. So the auxiliary out is also tied down to a relay. So the relay enables you to be able to you know, put up a flasher or something along those lines once you press the ISO button to be able to trigger things like static routes in uh, matrix systems or you know, if you've got some type of DSP system, uh, you can trigger that to you know, either open a mute or Duck an Duck external it. level or exactly. something like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So uh, as far as the actual belt packs go, they, these things look pretty robust. They're they're made out of, well, they're in these little rubber housings. So yep. this, would, I reckon, this looks like it'd go pretty well in educational environments where things aren't always treated with. Yeah, care definitely. That they perhaps re uh, deserve and command. Um, and you've got rechargeable batteries as well. Tell yeah, us about batteries. That's right. So each belt pack actually comes with two batteries. So there's one for whatever you're using, yeah. and there's one to have on standby just in case your other battery runs out. Now, these batteries will last about 14 hours as well, so it's not like you're going to run out very quickly. That's However, more than enough for a show. Exactly. Most shows. Yeah, that's right. Um, however, what you can do is it also has a storage bay on here, which means that you can have four batteries charging, you can have four batteries stored ready to go, plus the four batteries that are in your belt packs, if you're only using four belt packs, that is. So the actual uh, belt packs themselves, they're actually kind of cool. They're pretty really light, aren't they? Yeah, like yeah they're, exactly. They're, they're really light. And, yeah. You know, one cable. Yeah, that's right. Pretty simple. Yeah, definitely. Um, they've got the two primary channels that you can see on here, so IC1 and IC2, plus your ISO channel, which is what we're using to actually take our voice out of the base station and into the camera. Uh, there's voice prompts as well, so it lets you know what channel you're on, whether you've got maximum or minimum volume set. When you power it up, it gives Tells you, you the overview. firmware version. Yeah, exactly. So it gives you an overview and lets you know. Power on belt pack zero version one zero zero IC one. In that as well, when you actually register the, back, the belt packs, which is quite an easy process, so it's holding ISO and power when you power it up, 
pressing the register button on here, it will actually let you know that you have actually registered those belt packs. Cool. And if it hasn't, it'll tell you that registration has failed, and you'll also see that on the front of here, which will be indicated by an F. Okay, now, talking of registration of belt packs, what happens if you get, like, two or three of these systems in the same building at once? Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. If you do have that, you can actually co-locate them together and register the base stations together. So not only are you registering the belt packs which each individual base station, but you let the base stations know that there's other devices out there of its own type so that it will actually miss when jumping or, or coordinate its jumping pattern through frequency hopping spread spectrum. This essentially means that if you have up to four base stations set there, you can actually run those no problems without interference from each of the other base stations. Oh, cool. Okay. Now, headset options. You, this this is, comes as a complete system, but you can get a, a few different choices for headsets and stuff. So if I've already got some headsets I like. That's right. Yeah, so definitely the way that it works is you get a base station, you get four belt packs with the eight batteries, you get the charger and all the other components that are necessary. You can also get five headsets in one of the packages. So you've got four for the belt packs plus one for the front port here, which can be used as a communication store. You can also get them as all-in-one headsets with your talk buttons and your ISO on the side, or you can use them without headsets or buy it without headsets so that you can use your own preferred headset. Uh, a lot of people do have a preferred headset that they like using for comfort or, or just the... Or uh, just they already own them. Exactly, yeah. Um, now, that obviously makes it difficult because the type of connector that's used on here is a, a mini DIN connector. But obviously, being a communications company, they know how to sort these things out. So they've yep. actually got an adapter, which you can use, comes out of here, goes from your mini DIN to a 4-pin XLR. It's really front panel driven, so you don't have to worry about you know, pulling, bringing a laptop along with you, trying to dig through menu, menus in order to get the system to do what you want it to do. It's very simple push button commands. You push a couple of buttons, get to the routes that you want to be able to have. It lets you know by indicators on the front here. You've got game trim options as well for each of the outputs, not only your party line and four wire, but your auxiliary input and output as okay, well. Okay, great. So you can easily match it up with levels on other comm systems without needing to buffer your signals and everything. Exactly. And I notice you've got ground ground lifters. Oh, sorry, click on or RTS. Yeah, so there. obviously with, uh, with the different types of party line systems that you can connect, to this, they have different types of levels and, and different types of ways that they need to be able to interact to other payload yeah. systems. It's yeah. really simple, one button push, depending on which you're using, ClearCom or RTS, then you're ready to go. Okay, cool. Now, 2.4 gig, what's our effective range open line of sight on one of those? Yeah, so basically you'd be looking at uh, probably about 200 metres, okay. um, a bit more than that, you, uh, like you know, in regular use, uh, depends on the density of Wi-Fi devices that are around you, um, but they are pretty robust, so you will get 200 metres about line of sight. And it'll hop around, and depending hop on around. what else is going yeah. on yeah, in the spectrum at the time. Exactly. So it's a frequency hopping spread spectrum device, which basically means that it'll hop between those spectrums. Now, one thing that I should mention is it does have a technology called Spectrum Friendly. Now, obviously, 2.4 gig is getting overcrowded, right? So you've got a lot of devices, Wi-Fi nodes, other nodes that are using Zigbee technology, a whole bunch of different stuff that's, that's you know, essentially making that band a garbage band. So the developers have to actually get really smart in order to make sure that their product is robust enough to be able to work in those, those areas. Yep. So what the, uh, the ClearCom HME product does is it uses something called Spectrum Friendly. Now, Spectrum Friendly, what that enables you to do is use the whole band, or you can use the first half of the band, or you can use the last half of the band. And you can coordinate your frequencies as you would with any type of you know, wireless microphone device okay. to be able to get to the best spectrum possible to make it as robust as possible. And it is simply just a couple of button pushes to get to what you want, or you can use the whole band in order to hop around the whole band. Yeah, okay. As you mentioned, the, the whole thing is front panel driven, and yep. I think that, that's going to probably serve, serve it well in environments, uh, not even necessarily educational, but small hire companies. Yep. This will interface their existing two-wire system, exactly. sort of regardless if it's ClearCom or RTS. Yes. Um, and, and it gives people a good option. What sort of dollars are we looking at for... for the whole kit. Uh, it's about sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars for what you see here, which is basically well, four bell packs, the base station, five headsets, and all the other ancillary devices Batteries, that you have charger. here. Exactly, um, and then basically goes down from there depending on what you're actually purchasing. Okay, excellent. So it's a ClearCom DX210. Mitch, yep. thanks for your time. Okay, no worries. Thank Cheers. You.